In this video, we will be discussing Parkson's ThickTech Rotary Drum Thickener. If you remember back to the late 90s and early 2000s, you'll recollect that cell phone ads all had one thing in common, discounted or even free cell phones. We were inundated with ads whose intent was to focus all of our attention on a shiny new phone that we could flip open and talk to our friends, play Tetris, and even this newfangled thing called texting. The whole idea of this marketing was for us to look at the capital cost of the phone and ignore the contract you had to sign. And there is a simple economic reason for this. The capital cost of a cell phone is a very small fraction of the life cycle cost. The majority of the money we spend, and the cell phone companies collect, is in the service fees. By distracting us with low capital cost, they are able to slip in a higher service fee, which in the end, costs us significantly more. But we as consumers got smart. We figured this out, and not just some of us, we figured it out en masse. So much so that we, as consumers, forced an entire industry to switch how they market and sell their product. So what does this have to do with sludge thickening? Well, if we take a look back at the bar graph we drew for the cell phone costs, then draw a similar bar graph for the life cycle cost of a sludge thickener, we'll see an uncanny similarity. Much like the cell phone example, a sludge thickener's life cycle costs are heavily weighted towards operational costs, which in the case of thickening is polymer usage. Yet unlike cell phones, our industry still chooses thickeners predominantly on capital cost. A thickener that may be half the cost up front that is not efficient could double the operational costs, and these upfront savings are quickly swallowed. So how is it that an industry of math whizzes like ours has let this one slip by so long? Is it because we aren't aware of the simple economic quid pro quo? Not quite. Unlike a cell phone, where the life cycle costs are laid out clearly, albeit sometimes in quite small print, the difference in life cycle costs of one RDT to another is not always clear, especially considering some vendors may not be as honest as others about their equipment's performance. There have been historically two ways in which to evaluate life cycle cost of process equipment, the side-by-side -side pilot test and using a specified performance test with a high penalty for non-performance. However, both of these have shortfalls and limit their use. A side-by-side -side pilot is by far the most secure and comprehensive way to evaluate equipment performance. However, it takes a lot of time out of the design and construction schedule. It is costly, not only for the equipment, but for the designer's time. And the customer has to deal with all the vendors crowding up the plant and creating byproducts that need to be disposed of. A performance test with a strict penalty is also problematic. The test occurs at the end of the project, and is very likely that the conditions will not be the same as they were during the bid or even as specified. Therefore, vendors know there will likely be wiggle room and can play a bit fast and loose with their guarantees. So how do we properly evaluate life cycle costs when choosing a thickener without having to deal with the issues stated? That's where an innovative bid procedure has been breaking ground. In this procedure, the bid is completed as on any other job. However, when a vendor puts their capital cost, they also write in their polymer usage and capture rate. These two values go into a simple calculation that produces a life cycle cost. The vendor with the lowest life cycle costs wins a conditional letter of intent. So how does this maintain vendor honesty? Here's the catch. Once the vendor has received an LOI, they have a set time to show up to the site with a pilot unit and prove they can meet what they wrote down. This guarantees honesty as the vendor knows when filling out the form, they will have to prove they can meet what they say. If not, the LOI never becomes a PO. It's like playing poker without being able to bluff. In this version of the game, the perceived winner would be required to show their cards before they could take the pot. Therefore, there is no bluffing. Only the best hand wins, period. If they pilot and don't succeed, they have to eat the costs of the pilot. Next, let's talk about performance and what exactly it is that makes the performance of different RDTs so much different. What makes an RDT efficient or inefficient is its ability to do two things. First, allow the most water to be removed from the sludge, and second, maintain the sludge within the drum. In order to do this as efficiently as possible, the screening material used must have two characteristics. It must have a large, overall open area, but with small individual opening sizes. There are four common screening materials used for RDTs woven wire mesh, filter cloth, perforated plate, and wedge wire. Looking at not just the size or the shape of the openings in these materials, but instead at the ratio of open to closed space is the key. 
As stated previously, the goal is to have the most open area with the smallest individual opening size. The filter cloth falls on one extreme, as the openings are very small, almost too small to see. However, the overall open area is lacking. Therefore, capture rate is high, but water removal efficiency is low. On the other extreme is perforated plate. Due to the flat surface between the punched holes, there is significant closed space which leads to an inefficient ratio of open to closed area. Small holes can be punched to increase solids capture, but water release efficiency declines. Larger holes can be utilized to release more water, but they in turn will release more solids as well. Wedge wire is in the same camp as perf sheet with the same shortfalls due to the ratio of open to closed space. In addition, the wedge wire will shear the flocculated solids due to its shape, which leads to even lower capture. Now let's look at woven wire mesh. Due to the characteristics of how the material is made, namely by weaving wires together, the open space takes up the majority of the ratio. This means that we can have the highest open area while maintaining the smallest opening size. This is the secret to high efficiency thickening. As always, however, there is a catch. The perforated sheet and wedge wire are, in and of themselves, structural pieces of material. Therefore, making drums out of these materials is relatively cheap, whereas the woven wire mesh is limp, much like the screen on a door or a window, and therefore needs a structural frame to wrap around. This accounts for an increase in capital cost. So if a thickener is purchased strictly based on capital, the wedge wire or perf sheet drum will likely win. However, the life cycle cost will be significantly higher for the end user. There is another factor to high efficiency thickening as well. If we look at the cross section of the drum, then draw in some sludge, this becomes clear. You see, although water and solids take up this entire area, the only place where water is actually released is here, where the sludge and water physically meet the screening material. So the sludge had to be flipped over and cut up many times while traveling through the drum in order to ensure all the water and sludge come in contact with the surface area so that they may separate. In order to cut the sludge up along the length of the drum, we'll call this the y-axis. The thick tech has objects called roll bars along the entire length. So as the drum turns, the roll bars will flip the sludge longitudinally to ensure this meeting. This takes care of one axis, but how about the other? We also want to make sure that the sludge is flipped along the width of the drum. We'll call this the x-axis. For this, the thick tech has a series of rings called split augers. These rings go around the entire drum and force the sludge to overflow each like a weir. In addition, the split augers are largest at the beginning of the drum, where there is a large amount of water, and get smaller as the drum progresses, thereby regulating a constant velocity of solids through the length of the drum. As the water leaves and the mass in the drum becomes smaller, the split augers will maintain lower levels and therefore a solid particle will maintain the same velocity throughout the length of the drum. Here we see a shot inside the ThickTech RDT. Highlighted here are the split augers. And here are the roll bars. Now here's the really cool thing. Remember how we said that the shortfall of woven wire mesh was a need for a structural cage to support it? Well, if we take the split augers, then connect them with roll bars, voila, we have a structural cage for the mesh to fit around. So not only does this cage support the woven wire mesh, but it also aids in the thickening process. Taking this all in, let's look at a comparison of some of the leading drums on the market. First, we see a wedge wire drum with a few flights, but no other internal components. Second, we see a perforated sheet drum this one also has no internal components. Finally, we see the thick tech drum, complete with split augers, roll bars, and flights. Add into account the screening material and the difference in efficiency becomes very apparent. In this video clip, you can see all these components in action. The sludge is being detained by split augers and the roll bars are ensuring that all of the sludge and water are coming into contact with the screening material along the length of the drum. The ThickTech RDT is the most efficient drum on the market. Much like cell phones, the smart choice is the product with the lowest overall life cycle cost. Thank you for your time.